Welcome back to the Scratch series of Girls Coded Academy. This is Juliet, and today we are going to create a game of Mad Libs to learn about variables and asking users for input. Let's get started. So first, you're going to need to create a new project. And I'm going to call it Mad Libs. Another thing that is helpful before we begin is to find your favorite Mad Libs, either online or you can make one up yourself. And it can be as long as you want. Mine's going to be a little short just because I want to show you how to do it and how it works. Um, but you could use as whatever you want to create your Mad Libs and make it as long as you want and use whatever resources you want to create it. Okay, so first let's find a new sprite. We're going to kick Scratchy out, unfortunately, and we're going to add a new background. First, let's pick a sprite. Let's use this bear. <laughs> I think it's so cute. And now I'm going to add a little backdrop. Let's put him in the forest. Okay, that works well together. Let's go back to the bear. And so first we're gonna create variables for each fill in the blank of the Mad Libs. And so a variable is basically, basically like an empty box that stores a value. And this value is gonna be what the user gives us to put in the box. I'm sure you guys have played Mad Libs before. So that's kind of how it works. Um, so we're going to go over to variables, make a variable, and I'm gonna have it be an adjective. Ooh. Adjective. Make another one. That'll be a noun. And I have two nouns in mind. And you can't name a variable the same thing. So my second noun will be noun two. It can be spaces with noun two. Then I'm gonna do an adverb and a verb. I have a super short um, three sentence Mad Lib. Um, just for demonstration, like I said, you can have as many of these as you want, as long as they're named different things. So let's go over to the bear and we want to fill these boxes with the values the user gives us. So we're gonna go over to when the green flag is clicked and when the program begins, we want to use the ask block. So that's over under sensing. We're gonna ask. Our first one is the adjective. So what is an adjective? And you see this little bubble over here? So I'm gonna go back to variables. I'm gonna pull out set adjective, put it underneath I'm going to set answer and put it right in the circle. So let's see what that means. I'm going to click the answer box. So you could see the value here. Press the green flag. What is an adjective? I'm going to say smelly. And see how smelly went into the box for answer and then also went into the box for adjective. So let's fill another box. So I'm going to go over here, right click it and duplicate it, go back. I'm going to ask this time, what is a noun? So I'm going to set the first noun to answer. So now I'm going to go back, press the green flag, an adjective, I'll say smart. And a noun, I will say computer. So see how smart stayed in the box for adjective and computer now went in the box for noun. So we can ask the user for values and put it in the box and store them to use later on when we tell the user the story again. So I'm going to keep going for each of the boxes we have. Again, I'm going to duplicate it, go underneath, and ask for another noun. And this time I'm going to set noun two. Do it again, duplicate it, go back. What is a adverb? Go back down here, ask for an adverb one more time ask for a verb. Okay, I make it so verb. So now let's fill all the boxes. So what is an adjective? I will say trustworthy. See, trustworthy goes into the answer box and then goes to the adjective box. So we set adjective to answer. Now we go to noun. A noun will say a book. Book goes to the answer box, and then book also is the noun box because we said set noun to answer. So answer will update with each answer that the user gives, 
and it'll store them in these boxes. And another noun, we'll say a, a fridge. Again, fridge is in this box, and now fridge is in that box to store it. An adverb, we'll say quick. Please. <laughs> a verb, we'll say run. And so now, we have all of the values for each box stored that we can use later on when we give um, the story back. So how do we do that? So I'm not sure if you guys remember the say block. We can have the bear say different things. So I'm going to go over to operators and we can use this join block. And what's cool about these, you can layer them. So you can just layer a bunch of them together. Um, so the first sentence of my ad, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this whole statement right in the box. So I'm gonna say, begin my Mad Lib. Programming is my, and I put a space here because we want them to have a space before the variable. So I'm gonna put the adjective right here. And now a space will come before when I say it. I'm gonna drag it over here as my adjective it turns out we don't need this block, but you can throw it away. I'm just saying you can layer them. Hobby, period. I'm gonna duplicate this block again, put it underneath and say in the next line, besides your computer, all you need is space. Go over here and now I'm gonna need to layer my join blocks again. So I'm gonna pull out a join from operators Go back over here is a, I'm gonna go back to variables, pull out my noun over here and say, and I think I'm gonna need another layer block. So feel free to just keep layering them on it when you realize it, you know, put that right there. Go back over here, put my second noun in. Okay, put another space. Another space to begin. Remember the spaces because otherwise all the letters will come together. So you wanna make sure there's spaces between the verbs. Again, I'm gonna duplicate it, go back for my last sentence. It really helps me go back and then bring up my adverb. Put in just a space here. And I'm gonna put this back and I put back this whole block and put in my verb. So let's see what happens now when I press the green flag. So an adjective, I'll say organized. A noun, I'll say room. Another noun, calculator. An adverb, I'll say slowly. A verb, I'll say swim. So now it'll say organized was shown there. And so we can make these longer so it's easier to read. Um, and I'll show you again. So it shows the boxes in the sentences, the value of the boxes in the sentences. So you can have it be whatever the user says and it's kind of like the way the Mad Libs are. When you write them in, you put them in the boxes and you bring them out later when you say the phrases. Let's do it one more time. An adjective, we'll say smart. A noun, we'll say telephone. Another noun, we'll say pizza. Ooh, I spelled it wrong, but you know what I mean. An adverb, we'll say um, quickly again, because I can't think of another one. A verb will say um, write or play. Programming is my smart hobby. And see smart is what we put here. Besides your computer, all you need is a telephone and a pizza. Helps me quickly play. So you see how we can use variables and user input to create a Mad Libs. But if you want to hide these, boxes, just go back over here and unclick them. And one thing we can also do is you can explain the game before you begin. So 
I'll just put in a say block and say hello. Um, please answer the following following questions. And if you want to add music, we go back to backdrops. Let's add a sound. Let's go to loops. Let's play chill. Let's go back over here. Play sound chill. Control, put it in a loop so it repeats throughout the program and starts when the green flag is clicked. So let's go back to full screen and see how everything came together. Okay. So I hope this helped you create a great Mad Libs game and help you further understand variables, the ask blocks, and the say blocks. And um, we'll use these again in further projects we'll do with the Scratch series. Um, and next, ser next episode of the series, we'll start a new project adding more to what we learned for the past three um, videos. So I'll see you next time. Great job today. I hope you really enjoyed making your own Mad Libs and I'll see you next time. Hey, it's Bye. Juliet from Girls Code and Academy. If you liked what you saw today, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and let me know what else you'd like to see. Thanks for watching.